What up, though, Pistons fans? Welcome back to another episode. So, huh, man, man, this was tough. Another tough game, man. Another tough game. The Pistons lose tonight to the Miami Heat to drop to 0 4 on the season in a very winnable game. Initial thoughts, right? So, this game is much of what I thought it would be um, a very physical back and forth game. And it was. The Pistons' effort, once again, was there. The effort has not been the problem for the Pistons at all. It's much better than what we've seen last season as far as effort is concerned. So I have to give them that. But this team is also showing that there is much, much work to be done in the details. The beginning of the game was very back and forth. Um, it was very nip and tuck, very close game. But towards the end of the first half is when things started to really go downhill for the Pistons. They closed the half terribly. The Pistons have a problem right now with closing out halves and closing out quarters. And if you're a veteran team, you understand the importance of building momentum going into a quarter. And the Pistons have really given teams momentum going into quarters and going into halves. And that's something they really have to improve on. Now to the second half. In the third quarter, the Pistons really played their best. They were really able to lock down defensively, get stops, make Miami uncomfortable, and they were able to knock down some shots themselves. In large part to Tim Hardaway Jr. who got on the heater, but we'll get into him later. Okay, now let's get to the fourth quarter. The Pistons were up on the start, and two minutes in, they were down by eight. The turnovers, just the careless turnovers were bad. They were just bad, and it can't happen, especially on the road when you're trying to get your first win. They also have four team fouls in the first 90 seconds, which is unheard of, and that's just, that's just bad defense. They literally had all the third quarter work, all that work to claw back into the game and take the lead undone in just two minutes. And by that point, they were down by 11. But to their credit, they continued to play hard, right? They continued to fight, but they just kept turning the ball over and they couldn't hit a shot. And that just led to easy bucket after easy bucket after easy bucket for the Heat after the Heat had gone cold in the third quarter. It's so frustrating to watch because they finally started getting stops in that fourth quarter but they just couldn't score. And eventually Miami hit enough shots just to put it away. So let's take a look at the box score. Let's start with Kate. Kate was on the heater in that first half tonight, man. He didn't miss one shot. He finished with 24 points, eight rebounds, six assists, two steals, one block. He did have five turnovers again in 35 minutes on nine for 18 shooting, four for seven from three, two for three from the line. So this was one of Kate's better games. Um, not because of the scoring, not because of the rebounds or the assists, but the turnovers were down to five right we understand there's going to be turnovers you know regardless of who you are you know you look at the high usage players in the league the victor Wimbayamas, the lebron Jameses, the luka Doncic of the world all of those guys have high turnover counts just because they have the ball in their hands so much but you can't have close to double digit turnovers every game so kate got his down to five tonight so that's better but we still i still want to see that down into the three or four range at least a two to one assist to turnover ratio at the very least but overall he played a good game he was getting guys involved he was crashing the boards he was playing solid defense. He did have four fouls, and most of those were in the first half, but they came at critical moments when the Pistons needed them, and that was part of why the Heat were able to go on their run to end the half. But he was very aggressive, and unlike the other night, he wasn't forcing things quite as much. The Pistons needed that scoring early, too. He scored 13 of their 24 points in that first quarter. He did have a very nice in-and-out dribble play in the open court to get to the hoop. And I noticed this. It seems like every now and then, K will just have this, this random burst of speed or quickness just to remind us that he does have some athleticism. But like I mentioned, unfortunately for Cade and the Pistons, he picked up his third foul before the half, and he had to go to the bench. Let's get to Jaden Ivey. So Jaden Ivey finished with 18 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals, 4 turnovers, which was a lot for him in 32 minutes on 6 for 16 shooting and 5 for 9 from 3, 1 for 2 from the free throw line. So he was he didn't have his great offensive output tonight. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well. He struggled a little bit. And it seemed like he was just bothered by Bam Adebayo tonight, who's one of the best rim protectors in the league. But what stood out to me tonight about Jaden was his defense. He's giving everything he has on that end. And even though he does still have some work to do on that end, he's improved season over season, and he's only going to get better and better. You could just see tonight he was very active with his hands. He was getting on the glass. He was challenging guys at the rim. He was grabbing help side rebounds. He was just doing a lot of the little things tonight defensively to finish possessions. Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris. <sighs> Tobias Harris tonight has 9 points, 10 rebounds, one assist, one steal, one block, two turnovers in 37 minutes on four for 11 shooting, 0 for three from three, one for one from the free throw line. Tobias Harris was the only starter tonight who did not score in double figures. Yes, I'm gonna say it again. Tobias Harris was the only starter tonight not to score in double figures. He's been disappointing, man. He's been disappointing. I know we're only four games in, but 
Come on, Tobias. You got to be better than that. You have to be better. I sound like a broken record from last game, but it's it's been the same story. He's got to be better. He was just off again tonight. He had a few point blank misses at the rim. He couldn't get any of his shots to fall. Missed some wide open looks. And he had so many bobbles of the ball when he was dribbling and just turning the ball over. On one play in the third, he grabbed a rebound and actually waved Jaden Ivey off and almost turned the ball over on that possession, only to then pass to Jaden with a few seconds left on the clock. Now, I'm aware of the fact that the Pistons are committing more energy and effort on the defensive end of the floor, but Tobias, at the very least, needs to take better care of the basketball, even if he isn't looking to score. He was just, he really hurt the Pistons tonight. In that fourth quarter, it was just so many ill-advised shots that really hurt the Pistons when they were trying to get back into the game, when they were trying to get buckets. They were playing good defense, and then he would just take a bad shot, and it would just kill the momentum. When, you, when that happens, when you play great defense, and then you come down and take an ill-advised shot, it just makes it, makes it harder to play defense on that next possession. It really mentally just destroys your momentum defensively when you take bad shots, and that's just what he was doing tonight. He's got to be better, man. I mean, this is his fourth straight game where if he plays average, we have a chance to win all four games. He has to give us more. He just has to give us more. And there's no other way around it. He just has to be better. He just got to be better, man. Through four games, the Pacers, the Cavaliers, the Celtics, and now the Heat, his highest scoring game is a season opener of 13. It's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. When you are brought here to score and to provide offense, and you are the only starter who is not in double digits, that's a problem. And that's something that can't be overlooked. He has to be better period. Jalen Duren. Jalen Duren had 10 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, three blocks, two fouls in 29 minutes on five or six shooting. No free throws. JD played a solid game. He didn't play his best game, but he played solid. He played hard, particularly in that second half, but he had a double-double, right? He had three blocks, so he's improving defensively in the paint. He protected the rim pretty well tonight. I was happy to see that from JD. And you could see, once again, he's playing hard. In the fourth quarter, there was a possession where he was guarding Jimmy on an island, and he was gassed, and you could see it. Jimmy goes to the basket, tries to do an up-and-under reverse, and JD recovers and blocks a shot. So JD's energy and his effort and his intensity is there. He's taking pride on the defensive end of the floor. Even though he's not the defensive finished product we want to see yet, I am seeing strides being taken from Jalen Duran, and I'm happy to see that for sure. We talked about Tim Hardaway Jr. a little bit. Let's get into him. So he had 20 points tonight. One assist, one turnover in 33 minutes on 5 of 10 shooting, 3 of 6 from 3, 7 of 7 from the free throw line. This was by far Tim Hardaway Jr.'s best game. I will say this, Tim Hardaway Jr. is undersized at the 3, but when he's scoring like this, it kind of offsets that, especially when he's playing as hard defensively as he is. He had a lot of deflections with his hands, active hands. Um, he was playing tough defense, physical defense. He was bringing the energy. He played hard, and most of his damage was done in that third quarter for the Pistons after a quiet first half. In the third quarter, the Pistons needed his offense, and they got it. And he, along with the Pistons' defensive efforts, what got them back into the game. He can be streaky for sure, but when he's on, he's on. And tonight, he was on. Let's get to the bench. Isaiah Stewart, man. Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah Stewart proved why I've been saying all along that he isn't going anywhere anytime soon. There was a play in the first quarter where there was a missed shot in the Pistons end. And Stu goes up and grabs the rebound, misses the pullback. Grabs it again, misses the pullback. Grabs it again, misses the pullback. Then Jaden Ivey comes in, grabs the rebound, and he gets fouled and goes to the line. That's Isaiah Stewart. Stu is the perfect type of player you need to have against a team like Miami because he can counter their physicality with more physicality. The Heat play a gritty, tough style of play, and they will try to bully you if you don't match that. But there ain't no bullying Isaiah Stewart. And when he was playing with energy the way he did tonight, it just gives the rest of the guys an extra jolt of energy. He had 11 rebounds in the first half alone. And just his energy, his relentlessness, his physicality, after a while it just wears on you. Just how hard he plays the game of basketball, it reminds me of Ben Wallace. Now I'm not saying he's Ben Wallace because he's one of one. Ben was more athletic and his instincts and timing were otherworldly, right? We understand that. But the way Stu plays the game reminds me of Big Ben. And that's invaluable, especially for a young team that's trying to find and develop an identity. How many games did we see where Ben Wallace had 15 plus rebounds and zero points? Tonight, Isaiah Stewart, 15 rebounds and two points. So regardless of how big or small his role is going to be on this team, which I think is going to be an important one, I wouldn't be surprised if Isaiah Stewart ended up being a piston for life. Thank you, Donald Haslam, for the Miami Heat, right? Regardless of his role, he was always a big contributor towards what Miami calls 
Heat culture. That's what I see for Isaiah Stewart with this team. Ron Holland. Ron Holland has six points, two rebounds, 14 minutes on three for six shooting, 0 for one from three. He had a few buckets in the open court and he was really able to get to the rim when he wanted to because of his quick first step. But most of his offense is likely to come when spacers are on the floor to give him those driving lanes and in the open court on the wings. Fontecchio had six points, four rebounds, one block, and 22 minutes on two for nine shooting, one for five from three, one for two from the line. So he didn't play great tonight. Um, he missed a lot of open shots as well. He took a lot of ill-advised shots where he was bringing the ball up court and just rising for three. That's not what I want to see. He needs to be set up. I want to see him spotting up, catching the ball in the pocket, and pulling up for three. He's a rhythm shooter. So even though I know J.B. Bickerstaff is allowing the bigs to bring the ball up court at times, I don't want to see Fontecchio stepping into threes. I don't want to see that. Like last game, the Pistons had their chances tonight, man. And now they're 0-4. I will say this. This team is better than they were last year, but they have a long way to go. Last year, they were packing games in after any sign of adversity, just getting blown off the floor. Now, they're hanging in games, but they're not finishing any of them. They're not able to put together four quarters of basketball, and that's been the problem because they've been in every single game this season. That is the next step in this team's progression, and I said the same thing last game. This is what a young team that's trying to grow looks like. These are what you call growing pains. They play hard, but they don't always play sound, which is why we brought in vets like Tobias Harris, and he just has not been that for the Pistons so far. And even though it's early, it's still concerning. If the Pistons want to start winning games, they have to close games better, and they have to put together four quarters as much as possible. It's just that simple. But what did you guys see in this game that I missed? Let me know down in the comments, and let's talk about it. Up next for the Pistons are the Philadelphia 76ers this Wednesday on the road. And I'll be right back here post game to break it all down. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Let's go. Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it. It's for my city and the team coming with me. Headed for the championship even if the road is long.